Hey there, it's Jason from Codemanship uh, with a short video diary entry today, another technical one about um, testing multi-threaded logic. Um, so I want to demonstrate something here, um, which is a very simple, there's all sorts of ways you can handle testing multi-threaded logic, but I want to show you something very, very simple that can work in a lot of cases um, when, I, when it's our code that's multi-threaded that we're testing. So I've got a, a total method here it's asynchronous, so its job essentially is to add up a list of integers um, and then call back a, a lambda that's passed in um, with the result. Um, so it runs asynchronously. In other words, it will it will return control immediately, and then it'll try and do the calculation on a separate thread. Now, testing this, if we take a look at our test here. Um, so we call total, but it returns control straight away. So we're going to hit this assertion before we've actually picked up the result of this uh, of this calculation, which means when I run this test, it's going to fail. And it's going to fail because it hasn't actually done the calculation yet. And this is a pattern that we see repeated many times now, particularly in this age of sort of distributed computing, where a lot of the time we're waiting for things to come back um, in our code. So we see this sort of pattern where you call an asynchronous method and then you, you pass in a, a lambda that it's going to call back to get some kind of result when it's finished. Now, there are all kinds of mechanisms in Java, for example, um, for um, uh, waiting for results. So you can, I mean, the, the, the brute force way is to just wait, to use thread.sleep and wait for however long you think you need to before you get a result. But that, of course, means you're going to end up with a lot of tests that are waiting. So they're going to run slow. Uh, and it can get a little messy and a bit unpredictable. Um, you can use, there are mechanisms built into Java now, like um, futures, like completable futures that you could use, but I find them a little ugly. Um, and for what I'm doing half the time, um, just very overcomplicated for what I need. Um, an easier way, a simpler way of dealing with this um, is to make the total method synchronous for the purposes of testing. So if we take a look at that method again, if we were to make this just run on the same thread like that, for example, then our test would pass because it would do the calculation and then return control. Uh, so by the time we reach the test assertion, it's done the calculation and returned the result. The problem being is that we can't, we can't keep changing this code every time we want to test it. Um, so what do we do when we want to change code without actually changing code? Well, um, we create some kind of um, swappable implementation, some kind of dependency injectable implementation um, of the code that actually runs this 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 um, action here. Um, so what I've done is I've defined an abstraction for running actions, for running runnables, as it were, um, and I've got two implementations. We've got an, an asynchronous implementation that will run it on a separate thread an asynchronous implementation that will run it on the same thread, on the calling thread. Um, so if we look at the testable version of our totaler, we're injecting this runner in. So it could be asynchronous or synchronous. Um, our totaler doesn't need to know. It's not its problem because we've separated that concern. And then we run it using that abstraction. So in our test, let's take a look at our test here. We can pass in a synchronous runner for the purposes of testing. And then it will return control only once the calculation is complete and it's returned the result. So uh, there we go, lovely. Um, and just to, for completeness, I've done another version of the test with the asynchronous runner, which is logically equivalent to what we had before. And we would expect that this test will fail because it returns control before it's done the calculation. So there you go. That's a really, really simple technique um, for making... Uh, for testing asynchronous code, which is just to make it synchronous or to make it temporarily synchronous. Now, most of the time when you're testing multi-threaded code, you can use test doubles in other kinds of ways. Um, for example, you can use mock objects to test. If you've got two processes happening on two separate threads, you can test each process synchronously and then use mock, op mock objects to check, for example, that callbacks are being called and so on and so forth. Um, but sometimes you want to test the whole conversation, not either side of the conversation. And ideally, you'd like to be able to test that repeatedly and probably synchronously. Um, so this is simple technique for making asynchronous code synchronous, and that's just to make it 
swappable in that kind of way. So another good use of dependency injection. Anyway, there you go. That's today's video diary entry. I hope that's given you a little bit of um, food for thought. Um, comments below if you've got anything to say about that. Um, like and subscribe and just press all the buttons. Um, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.